This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is the number one mentoring program that teaches you e-commerce from scratch. Change has a real community with real results. I have been working with Ryan for many years now and have attended many of his events and retreats across the world and got to meet members and the amazing community of like-minded people. Ryan works with a lot of big names in the business world, helping them build online businesses and e-commerce. Change offers personal one-on-one support, no experience needed, but like anything, this takes time and is not a get-rich-quick scheme. If you put the work in, you will get the results. E-commerce and online shopping is getting bigger and bigger. This is a great opportunity for anyone that is looking for financial freedom. For more information, go follow Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help you get started and build a successful online business. Yes, people, this is just a little reminder to let everyone know that my live audience in Glasgow at the iconic Pavilion Theatre on the 15th of September is less than two weeks away. And what a night we have planned. We have guests coming from all around the world. We have Big James Cosmo, who appeared in Braveheart, Sons of Anarchy, Game of Thrones. We also have Tam Hassan, who appeared in The Business and Football Factory. And we have Lilo Brincato, who appeared in an unbelievable movie called A Bronx Tale alongside Robert De Niro. We also have surprise comedians coming along and music. What a night we have. And there's only 10% of tickets remaining. You can get the tickets on the Pavilion website or the link is in my bio on Instagram. I hope to see you there. Have a great day. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. And boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got Luke Belma. Luke, how are we? Doing well, brother. It's, uh, I think it was a year ago that we've been trying to plan this. Yeah. So finally here, great weather and uh, happy to be here. Happy to have you on. You've kind of made waves the last two, three years. You've kind of came out of, I wouldn't say nowhere, but you've exploded onto the internet, reels, podcasts, talking about money. You're a big fan of e-commerce back in the day, 2016, 2017, I believe, crypto. But you speak about things that I like to talk about as well, BlackRock, <laughs> chemicals in the sky, chemicals in the food, waters. People call us crazy. We are crazy. Everyone's crazy. I always say that, but it'll be good to get into the nitty gritty and to see how your mind sees the world. I believe you've got a great mind, crazy mind, but it's the crazy ones who then awaken everybody else's mind, I believe. Yes. I mean, that's the goal. I, uh, you begin, you begin realizing certain things about how the world works when we were talking about it backstage and it's like, when you begin to wake up to certain things and how the world works, you begin to think differently. And just by existing, if you are vocal about what you believe or you're vocal about what you see, naturally, uh, you'll share these things. The problem is most people live in a situation whereby they have something to lose. Therefore, they don't speak their mind or they don't, they don't live their truth because their job's at stake. Uh, their reputation is at stake, what is family going to think? So they can't explore other belief systems or other ways of thinking. So they call us crazy, but maybe just an alibi for people's cowardice to in and of themselves express how they actually feel, which is why we talk about money and freedom and all these things, because it gives you the ability to express yourself. Because if you don't have resources to be able to tell people, hey, how you feel, and live life on your own terms, which is kind of what we've been talking about, then you don't have that freedom. So uh, it's kind of a, a dual perspective. What is freedom to you? Your ability to do what you want, where you want, how you want to, without, well, with as least constraints as possible. Uh, I don't think there's this concept of absolute freedom unless you're maybe a monarch or a sovereign, you know, that has 
full rule over a, a, a state, but just the ability to do and be and say whatever I want to do. Before we get into everything, though, I always like to go back to the start with my guests, get more of a bit of an understanding about you, Luke, where you grew up and how it all began. Uh, come from Argentina, went to the United States at the age of 16, $200 in a suitcase. Like many immigrants, started pressure washing basketball courts, cleaning toilets, uh, worked all sorts of odd jobs, made my way to university. University wasn't for me, ended up leaving, and then started working cubicle jobs. And while I was working those cubicle jobs, I started exploring and being told about different opportunities. So I would wait tables at nighttime. During the day, I would kind of have my normal nine to five job or try to make my way up the ladder. And then I started hearing about making money online. And initially it was because of the stock market. And I was exploring this thing that was called Robinhood. It had just come out, this new application on your phone that made stock trading fun. So I'm a fellow server's like, hey, have you heard about Bitcoin? I was like, no, I haven't. It's like, oh, let me explore it. And I started doing some research, bought a couple of Bitcoin 2016, and that's where my journey began. That led me to e-commerce where I learned how to make money online by building stores and selling what people would buy in person online because I realized where people were spending most of their time, which was on the internet. So logically, you wanted to go where people are instead of kind of focusing on the old model of just retail. So when I started doing e-commerce, it wasn't necessarily popular, but at the same time, there were still taboo factors. So I was like, let me try it. Let me pioneer it. And it did well. We did eight figures in e-commerce. And then I turned over all of my profits into crypto. That's kind of how I decided to play it because I understand very much where crypto is going. I understand where Bitcoin is headed. And ever since I started buying Bitcoin at $588, my conviction only grew stronger and stronger because I've seen it mature. So understanding the, the, the nature of this asset class, I put my chips uh, in this asset class known as crypto and it went extremely well. And then I was like, hey, you know what? I've been able to build uh, a lot of resources and been able to make a lot of money, but I'm missing an ingredient, which is people, right? I need a network. I need people around me that can empower me, that can help me, that can assist me with other things that are just money. Because if money's all you have, then you don't have much. So I was like, let me build a network. So I launched Capital Club, which is my organization right now, where it's focused on building an ecosystem designed for entrepreneurs and helping them, whether it's in connections, whether it's with resources or opportunity to elevate in their entrepreneurial journey. So it's different aspects of it. And that's pretty much what I'm focused on nowadays. Uh, so full-time crypto, you know, full-time making content and uh, just glitching through the matrix, bro. How was family life? Family life is great. Very blessed. Uh, my parents, phenomenal people, took care of us. So nothing to complain about. Thankfully, they put me through English school in Argentina, which was fucking ruthless because you would have English school in the morning and then you would have Spanish school in the afternoon. So that was ruthless, but it allowed me to uh, learn my my English skills and here we are today. So shout out to my parents. And then, yeah, uh, my girl, phenomenal, been with me for 10 years. And uh, she and I have a great relationship, gives me the freedom, the ability to also travel and, and work remotely, which is important. So it's great. How important is it to have a good woman by your side? Two is always better than one. And the thing is, what people don't realize is in a relationship, you're not just investing time. You're investing energy and resources into a relationship. A relationship is an investment. So you have to ask yourself the people that you're spending time with, not just a relationship like a woman, but it can be a relationship in general with friends. It can be with business partners. You're investing time and resources into these things. So the question is, are you going to go the distance? And you wanna look for two factors when it comes to uh, relationships that you want long-term. One is loyalty and longevity, right? Loyalty is, are they gonna stick through you, the tough, and do they have your best intent in mind? And you know where that lies. And then the second one, is going to be your longevity. Do people wanna go with you far enough? Because if they're short-sighted, but they have good intentions, well, they're not gonna necessarily be with you throughout the entire phase. If they wanna go the distance, but they're going to cave, 
right, under pressure, then you don't want that situation. So I'm looking for those characteristics. And when I find those characteristics, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna invest my time, my energy, my attention into this person, and we're gonna grow together. So one, it's phenomenal, you know, to have somebody that you grow with, especially, you know, she was driving me to, my girl used to drive me to work because I didn't have a car. So coming from a place where I had nothing and we built a relationship from that perspective, it also gives me the ability to go back home and not have my guard up of, hey, does this person have certain intentions or does this person have my best interest? No, because that person's been around for the extended period of time. And I also value these things. So longevity to me is key, loyalty to me, loyalty, uh, loyalty to me is key. And these two collectively, when you find these traits, you wanna invest into these people. But for my relationship, yeah, it's a uh, super key. What age did you, what, how much was crypto when, what was it, 2016, 2018? 2016, Bitcoin was 588, 2016. Yeah, and then you had the bull run of 2017, 2018. That was the first bull run where altcoins really took off, where you saw Cardano go from a penny to a dollar sixty, 160 x 160 160x return in the span of a couple of weeks. It was madness. Uh, but I round tripped my entire bag during that bull run because you know I fell into the entire, hey, everybody hold the bags, follow the revolution. And then we got dumped on by all the venture capital that was playing the game. So you just get smarter through the cycles. This is my third cycle in crypto. So I'm definitely playing the game a little bit different than I used to. How do you think crypto will be in the next 10 to 20 years? I think crypto is only evolving and it's evolving in a positive way. We just saw this this week, I think in fact yesterday, that the entire kind of bank to bank transfers here in England had been completely stopped, right? Because you're dependent on a centralized server and on a centralized system. And if that thing fails, your entire system is compromised. So you now need technology that is decentralized, not decentralizing just opportunity, but decentralize the fact that problems and errors can take place and occur. And if you don't mitigate them, you can't expand. That's why technological advancement is important. When we look at money, money is merely a technological advancement. You look at coinage. When coinage was introduced, it was a better way of bartering because if you wanted cows and I wanted water, right? What was the middle ground? There wasn't something that we could actually standardize. Precious metal standardized that. But then it was difficult to transport and it was diff difficult to move. So we mo moved it to what? Bills. And now we're like, oh, well, we're too lazy with bills. Let me digitalize it. Well, now we're digitalizing it, right? It's the inevitable process in evolution of money. Who's gonna be in control of it? So now you have different factions competing for what is going to be the digital money. And it's incredible to watch. So you, the question is, which digital money are you going to support? Are you gonna support a decentralized ledger, a system that belongs to the people? Or are you gonna support the one that is run by the banks? That's why I basically practice what I preach. I don't keep money in the banks. I keep my money in my own possession, right? I keep my money under my own kind of uh, management. I don't depend on a bank. When you deposit money into a bank, they don't keep it safe. They take that money, they invest it. The entire game is a scam. So once you understand basic financial literacy, you start comprehending these things and you realize all the billionaires and all the rich guys, they have Bitcoin, all of them. From Peter Thiel to Elon Musk to Chamath, like all these guys, they, they're like, hey, this is, this is good. This is a good thing. Who's saying that it's bad? The fucking government? Biden? Like literally the people that are fucking you up. So you're not gonna listen to them. You wanna go to where the energy and the intention and the power lies. And the evolution of money is going to be, in my opinion, of the people. So I have to kind of fight for that. And uh, Bitcoin happens to be one of those mediums of, ex of exchange, or at least one of the symbols that today we utilize to represent that. Is it going to be the future? Well, I would like to consider it, but Bitcoin can also be co-opted and psyoped by BlackRock. You know, all, they have infinite liquidity, which means they could pretty much buy up a, a large percentage of the supply and control the price of Bitcoin through the ETF. So I don't know where that lies, uh, but I would like to consider that uh, decentralized money is going to be something extremely important. So that's a brief understanding of what I think about crypto. What do you think about BlackRock? I mean, at the end of the day, whoever controls the printers controls the world and they control the printers. I mean, if you look at who the Federal Reserve goes to and who countries go to in order to get funding or in order to get investment advice, it's BlackRock. And that's just, they're the best player in the game. 
and that's it is what it is you want you can be mad at it or you can just realize how they're playing and realize that you're on the same chessboard so when you know larry fink ceo of blackrock says hey i like bitcoin and i like it a lot you better be fucking listening <laughs> because he sees something so you either play with the players or you get played and I just look at these individuals and I understand their nature. They don't give a fuck about me. Why should they? Like, honestly, they don't know me. Nobody they, gives a fuck about anyone. Gives, exactly. So when you look at that perspective, I'm like, okay, it's player versus player in that sense because they are playing certain games, but simultaneously they also control the news, which means they're playing narratives. So you need to understand how they're playing. And once you open up your eyes, you can see some patterns and through pattern recognition, you can identify where the world's headed. That's why you can see crypto cycles, ebbs and flows. You can see uh, the ebbs and flows in the markets and you can understand trends by understanding people, by understanding company, by understanding what they stand for. And you align all these things together and you can make a comprehensive thesis. When you talk about patterns, what sort of patterns are you talking about? Patterns that's been here for hundreds of years, thousands of years, millions of years. We look at the thousands of years, the same patterns every 10 years, 20 years with new plagues, new destruction, new wars, more money, everything's greed. What patterns do you see? Do you see patterns of life or patterns what's going to happen to then what to invest into or just patterns of... Do you want me to give you a crazy pattern? Yeah, let's go. I'll give you a crazy pattern that I'm, I've basically been deciphering probably over the last uh, year or two. And it has to do with how Central America and South America is taking a new form. So if you look at World War One and World War Two, prior to that, we had uh, the Spanish flu. Right, and so we have a Spanish flu, we have a swap of currency because we have the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 get introduced, and we have two world wars. And then we have basically this fight against what? Communism, right? We had the fight against drugs, the fight against terror, but back then it was the fight against communism. So what happened? We saw a massive overthrow in South America and the installment of right-wing dictators and right-wing governments like we're seeing now. But the question is why? Now, when you begin to look at how the IMF works, which is the International Monetary Fund, they are what the Economic Hitman, a book that I read, uh, he used to be one of these jackals for the IMF that would go and do broker deals with governments, loan them money in exchange for what? Resources and assets and collateralized land and things of this nature. So what would take place? A disaster would roll around natural disaster or planned disaster, either one. <laughs> natural coup or planned coup, either one. Point is, something would take place where the government would need money or resources. The IMF would come in and say, hey, here's a relief package. But attached to the relief package, you have stipulation A, B, C, D, massive interest. And obviously the IMF can never default. They can never default. So what do they have to do? They have to overthrow. So what you do is you take a country into a massive pattern of debt. You can see it in Argentina with left-wing governments taking and basically stealing everything for about 50 years. The country now is in massive debt. And now you have within, what, 30 days, a right-wing government installed, all the deficits removed, right? So all the debt instantly removed so that now what? You can pay back to the IMF the debt. So you're seeing a cycle, a hundred year loop cycle of these big gov like entities that control money and money supply coming into disaster and offering relief, quote unquote, and through that relief, being able to nationalize and control a country, which is crazy. So now you're gonna see through South America, pretty much all the countries adopt a right-wing perspective, which initially might become benevolent. It'll be a good kind of transition, but eventually you're gonna see a big clasp down of right-wing push to pay off any sort of debts and to nationalize assets. It's, it's taking place. That's why you see the selling off in Argentina, for example, of the Argentine Airlines, which was a nationalized asset, or the YPF, which is the gas station that's belonged to the government. They're selling all these things to private companies, which is fine. But the point is, these are different patterns that when you begin to realize, you can identify. So now Argentina is a great investment opportunity because they're about to be in surplus. They're about to start making money again. Is it risky? Yeah, yeah but is it a 10-year play, 20-year play? For sure. So you'll be seeing me buy some land in Patagonia and get a ranch. Maybe not like uh, you up in Scotland, but <laughs> that's the perspective, bro. Everything's a risk. Yeah, everything's Everything a risk. So different pattern, different pattern recognitions, and you can talk about Elon Musk, 
how he's building an alternative system. So you have the social media communication platform X, you have the banking solution, which will now be integrated on X, you have the satellites, you have Neuralink, you have Tesla. The guy has all the data to basically build an alternative system, which is what he's doing. An alternative system to what? To the government system. So you have power charging, which is controlled by Elon. You have the communication, which is controlled by Elon. You have the internet, Starlink, which is controlled by Elon. Uh, you have the spaceships. You have Neuralink, which is going to be the implant. You have, I think it's Gronk, which is the AI. So all these things together collectively put you into a supervillain situation or a Lex Luthor type character to, for an alternative system. So we'll be seeing a, a, a fusion or a complete anarchic separate this kind of perspective between government and private industry. Now they collude a lot, right? Now they collude a lot, which is what we call techno feudalism. You know, when basically Elon Musk is, or Mark Zuckerberg, or any of these uh, social media guys, they operate as like hidden kings and hidden like monarchs because they control the social platforms. So it's what we call technocratic state. Uh, in what we call techno feudalism. Feudalism, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but it was, oh. uh, so feudalism back in the day was when a king would own a lot of land and the peasants would come and they would work on the land for free in exchange for food. But the feudal lords own the property. So they own the place of commerce. Therefore, even though they weren't the government, they were still in control. Today, we have the same thing taking place, but it's technologically like you could literally censor somebody to death, right? Un until we had these alternative systems come into be. So we see the collusion of government and we see the collusion of, of, of corporations take place. I don't know is it, as if technology advances, if we kind of go more towards just relying on companies instead of just relying on government or if these things marry into one super monster that with AI kind of fucks us all up. We're, we'll see, but the best we can do is uh, level up and prepare yourself. And prepare yourself. What do you think of AI? I interviewed a man called Mo Goddard. He worked with Google. He says AI is going to be one billion times smarter than any human on the planet within the next five to ten years. I agree. I agree. I don't think we understand what is happening. I don't understand. You can process what one thought, maybe two thoughts at once. Dude, this thing is running and processing everything at the same time. You're going to see the emergence of people that worship these AIs. You're going to see people marry the AIs. You're going to see people fuse with the AIs. It's going to be pretty crazy. So you're going to see the battle of the, you know, the chipped versus the unchipped take place, which is going to be taking, taking place. I mean, if Neuralink actually works, and you actually have the ability to instill learning behavior patterns and you can accelerate learning, you can basically turn somebody into a supercomputer, they'll outcompete anybody in the marketplace. So you might be forced into it, right? Because if not, you're gonna be jobless. So what are you gonna do? Uh, it's a crazy situation that we're in. I don't see that kind of in our necessary future, but it might be for our kids or the generations to come. But once again, technology is advancing so quick, we don't, we don't really comprehend it. Uh, it's fast, yeah. it's fast. They're trying yeah. to microchip the brain now as well. So this is what they say, they get out first, get the mobile phones, people queue for two nights, three nights to get the new iPhone. So as soon as they bring the new chip out, microchip, people are getting chipped in Sweden. So people are getting microchipped now. Now you've got metaverse, people are going into different, there's different levels of this universe. I believe in my own perspective because I've interviewed enough people to try and get an understanding of it. And basically when you break it all down, nobody actually knows what the fuck is going on. Mm. We're just speaking from the knowledge that we gather through books, documentaries, other people we come across. But when you actually break it all down, what is the true source? What do you think the true source is for a human being? Intuition. I think, you, I think, I think your ability to perceive how the things around you are working, you're not gonna know everything, right? And also you're not necessarily going to place your belief system into what somebody else has told you. You have to experience it for yourself. So it has to do with experience. It has to do with going through the process of learning truth because people are like, oh, like, what do you believe in? Well, if you believe in something, it means that you have no certainty of it, but you need to know things. There's a verse in the Bible that says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Not you shall believe in some white man with a beard 
you know, in heaven that, well, no, no, it says you shall know the truth. So the question is, how do you know the truth? Well, you need to be paying attention. You need to be aware, you need to be observant. You need to have open ears and you have humility. People act like, and they walk around like they know shit, like that they have the answers. Well, if you have the answers, then truth will never reveal itself to you. So very much walking with humility and like a student. I think that that's the biggest learning place. The biggest learning place to seek for truth is when you position yourself and being like, hey, I don't know anything, let the universe reveal itself to me. And it does. And these mysteries, you know, some people like to give it names and characteristics and attributes, but once again, we all experience it differently. What do you think humans are? What do you think we are? <sighs> I think I think we're experiencing this like three-dimensional realm, uh, but our consciousness will potentially be more expanded outside of our physical limitations once we die. What about the creator? Do you think someone created us? Absolutely, 100%. Could intelligent we, intelligent design makes absolute sense. Could we be machines? Could we be avatars? Could we already be robotic? I mean, I mean, I mean uh, robotic. Because you look at the way the central nervous system is, how the brain functions, how the organs function, something's created that. And if you go back thousands yeah. of years of where with some of the tombs and um, pyramids, some people say they were created by lasers. And yeah, I mean, I, there's there's definitely design. There's definitely design attributed to it. And it's, it's interesting you say that because, for example, when we talk about like civilizations that have been wiped out, this is obvious. Civilization has been wiped out. I just spent a month in Italy looking at the ruins of Pompeii. They say 80% of Pompeii is still under the ashes. So like all these things about history that we have no idea about, no context whatsoever, people are like, oh yeah, well, why is it that we don't have remnants of plastic from back in the day? I was like, well, maybe they were just so intelligent and so intellectually superior that they realized that plastic wasn't something that they should utilize. Mm -hmm. Like plastic is something that's fucking us up. Uh, so I think that right now we are in a phase of rediscovering humanity. I think we're potentially in the dark ages still of knowledge of how we operate and what our fullest capabilities and human potential is. If you were born, let's say you were in a, you're, you're, you're people, right? Was it, were born into slavery for another nation. And you were, and this is six, six or 700 year slavery period. Let's say you're born in year 300 of slavery. You're born into that. You have no context of freedom. You don't understand it. It's not been taught to you. You haven't been nurtured under it. You don't, it, it's not in your peripherals. You don't understand it. You may crave it, but you don't understand it because you were born a slave. We were born slaves. Look at the school system. Look at the music, look at the food, look at the propaganda, look at the television. It's, they're all tools of slavery, mass slavery. So when you look at all these things and you align it, you're like, whoa, hold a minute. Are they telling me that I'm free, but I'm not, right? Are they telling me that I have free will, that I can act and choose what I want, but I'm persuaded by all these things around me that create a false identity. We were talking about everything's an illusion. You're, you're sold that this is valuable. You're sold that this is valuable. You're sold that things are real, right? You're, th these are beliefs. So what if we've been born into this belief system that we're free, but you look at the byproduct of our existence and we're at 10% capacity of our potential, which means what? Which means it's not that the energy isn't being expended, it's that the energy is going into somebody else's pocket because we look at money different than rich people look at money. Rich people don't look at money like monetary units. Rich people look at money like energy. Energy, because you take that money and you pay somebody for what? Their time and their labor. That labor is energy. Everything is quantified in energy units. So rich people understand that. So they'll give you fake imaginary paper in exchange for what? Your lifespan. That's the game. So if you print the money, you get infinite lifespan that you can play with. That's why you can fund infinite wars. That's why you can fund infinite construction. That's why you can fund infinite slavery because you can pay people. That's why we're basically debt slaves. So the entire premise of where we currently stand in society is that we need to wake up as a collective consciousness that you aren't what people have told you that you are. You don't need to work a nine to five in order to be validated. You don't need to work for a big company. Yes, making a ton of money is great, but dude, you can make five grand a month and live with total freedom. I was happy when I was making 10 grand a month, dude. I had less responsibilities, less problems than I fucking do now. 
but I've been limited in Cape and you can't make $10,000 a month. No, well, you need a college degree. Oh, well, you need to do this. These are all limitations, slave belief systems that have been cast upon us on how we're supposed to operate. And once you break free from that illusion, you begin to realize that you can live life on your own terms. But it's trying to break free. And like I say, happiness is a mindset. And no yes. matter if it's 10,000 a month, $10 a month, because people can be happy with anything. Yes. And you see the kids in Africa or whatever, and they've not got much and they get a new ball. Or, yes. And they're the happiest kids in the world. Kids here, Western society, they've got everything, but yet they complain the most. So everything like you say, it's slavery. I'm a slave to it. I understand the patterns, but yet I'll still buy the nice watches, the nice cars, the nice house, because it still strokes the ego. But as the more I get, the more I know that's not where I find my true purpose or my, the source of true happiness. I genuinely get my happiness, see my kids happy and other people around me happy. Mm. It's just the way my mind is. I don't, I'm never happy all the time. I'll get short bursts of 20 seconds. Ah, that was good. And then I'm straight into thinking something else. I'm trying to quiet the mind. I've tried meditation. I've tried fucking running. I've tried it all. My job is just to stay busy. That's all, that's all I can learn. I'm 40 years old. So I figured the patterns that works for me, what kind of, like I say, I understand the technology, but I'm still addicted to my phone. I'm still addicted to making money, even though I know money is a fucking illusion. And the, the value we give money here for a paper, a currency that it doesn't even have any meaning, it doesn't have any value. We give it the value here. And that's where people need to try and waken up because it doesn't matter, even though 95s are just as important as well. Because sometimes I look at people and I think, have they cracked the code? Because they are doing their thing. They know when to stop, they know when to start. For me, as an entrepreneur, I can't switch off. I'll go on holiday and I fucking work harder than I do when I'm actually supposed to be working. So it's a constant Dana White says it as well. You're working Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. So it's consistent. And like I say, if you're working a nine to five as well, as long as you're providing for your family, for me, you're winning. It's just trying to find that balance of trying to enjoy life as well. And sometimes I can think we can get caught up in the fake illusion of life because social media portrays everyone as having a great life. But when you actually break it all down, nobody fucking that happy. I've never met someone who's connected and I think, bang, you've got it sorted out where they live off the land and grow their own crops and fresh water and their kids are free and the fucking farm and they've got their own animals. That's the way I see a good life back in the day, the Native Americans and they kind of seemed to me had it sussed with the way they grew their, the, the way they were connected to the animals and the love. But now I just see all destruction, pain, misery. I don't know if that then is going to be a, a massive awakening. I think lockdown was a massive awakening to people. Bear in mind there was over 13 billion vaccines put out. Um, the UK was over 93% with the vaccine. Everybody got it. I Thankfully, I didn't get it. I was against that. I questioned that. Like I say, I said to people, I'm not a scientist or a fucking doctor, but a good good intuition to understand something at a 99.9% .9 survival rate, but you're willing to put that in my body. And yet if I don't, I can't travel. I can't work. I'm ridiculed. I'm shamed and I thought you know what fuck it and thankfully now I stuck my guns and I think people now are waking up but if there's another lockdown in five years which potentially could be it still scares me how fast the world can be shut down and nobody questions it enough because they're believing what the media say the politicians say the politicians were locking people up people weren't seeing loved ones they were missing the buffs of their kids um, ad parents weren't the people weren't getting the right treatments and um, they were all partying at Christmas and fucking Downing Street, basically laughing at everyone. And yet people don't say anything. I'm surprised the streets aren't packed with protesters demanding fucking change. Because, because they're slaves. You, you need, that's what you need to understand. They're too busy to care. They can't care. They have debts. They have dictated their kids to school. They have their nine to five. They come back home. They're exhausted. They know that the world's fucked. They just, they're in this loop. This is where, this is where success comes in. It's breaking the current patterns of behavior because the current patterns of behavior that you have, because you realize that shit's fucked up. Like everybody, nobody's stupid. People see and they're like, yo, this shit's fucked. Okay, but what can I do about it? Well, nothing. Because you look at your calendar and you're like, dude, I'm, fuck, I'm fucking busy. Dude, when I, was, when I was cleaning toilets, pressure washing basketball, I was busy. I could still be there doing the same thing, being in that same loop, but upon a new awakening and a new thought, truth acts upon what? Action. So when the world or the universe gives you an insight, like look at what happened in COVID and it gives you an insight. If you don't act on that insight, truth stops revealing itself to you because you're not being obedient, you're not listening. 
So when it tells you, hey, wake up, look at what's taking place. You need to make more money. You need more passports. You need to be able to be financially free. You need to ensure that they don't just jab you and put anything into your body. When you start realizing these things, you need to act. So what does it take to act? You need to be able to set time aside and break out of the current behavioral patterns and what create new behavioral patterns towards an elevated lifestyle. And the elevated lifestyle doesn't mean having more things, but even people that have nothing, they still have things to work on. In fact, they have more to work on than most people. But just saying, oh, I'm happy is not enough an alibi because even if you're motherfucking happy, when shit hits the fan, you still got business to take care of. So your happiness isn't gonna make sure that when AI is introduced and input on fucking digital ID vaccine passports, that your happiness is gonna get you out of motherfucking trouble because it's not. So you still have to prepare because that's the world that we live in. We've just been bought into the system that everything's okay, that there's no war upon us, that nobody's trying to take our freedom, that nobody's trying to fuck us up. But you could just look at throughout all of history, how many countries have been sieged because they shut down their water, fucked up their water supply, or how many countries have been taken over because they infiltrated through the food system? Tons. Look what's taking place in America, dude. Everybody's fu fucking fat. They you, don't, you, don't, you don't think that that's on purpose? It's 100% on purpose. You're killing one of the only places and beacons of freedom left in the world constitutionally. Of course, everybody's attacking it. So the entire premise is, yes, right? Be content with what you have, 100%. Be grateful. If you can put food on the table, you're good. You got your basic necessities covered. You know what now? Somebody wants your fucking freedom. You don't like the truth? That's the truth. What do you think, Biden has your best interest in mind? Come on, bro. It's like, it's fucking, he's there stealing. Like, that's the name of the game. Like, you don't understand politics? You're a fucking clown. You think these people work for free? For free? No, people, the people don't work that way. So once you understand that they don't have your best interest in mind, you have to seek out your own best interest. You have to protect yourself, take care of yourself. That means you have to become better. You have to become better. And what we talk about is becoming better. Right, And people don't like that because becoming better requires what? Accountability and responsibility. And what I always tell people is the rich and the unrich, the successful and the unsuccessful, they're all self-made. But only the rich and the successful will admit it. The unsuccessful and the broke people, they won't admit that they're self-made, but they are self-made. They are the byproduct of their thoughts and their decisions. So once you unlock a new thought, a new data set, a new piece of truth that the universe gives it to you and you don't act upon it, like when you at the age of, I think it was uh, 30, 31, 31, 32, something like that, it hits you. And you're like, what the fuck? And you acted upon that truth. You could have taken that and continued down the same journey, but you're like, no, and a new life because you acted on it. So the encouragement to people is act upon the knowledge that you're receiving as to where the world is headed because it's not a good place. And if you're in fucking Berlin in 1944 or 1932 and somebody told you, get the fuck out because this is what I see. Nah, 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 I'm not going to get, you would have gotten fucked. It's mad that we all have choices, but like you say, the thing about human beings, we are very intelligent <laughs> and no matter what people can be brain, like they can be smashed down for so many years mm. of everything they went through 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of hurt. So when you've got certain bits of knowledge, it's hard to accept yes, because the brain has been so programmed to think that way. And that's the difficult thing. Now we look at the, the schooling system and we think it was great and this and that. And then you've got John Rockefeller. I think he created the system in the 1920s or 1930s. And then women were wanting um, rights to vote equal rights and they got the rights to vote but the reason why they got the rights to vote is so that when they got jobs they had to put their kids through school and when your kids are put through school they're in the system because if you've got your kids for seven years 14 years 20 years if you go to university it's a long time to program the minds of any human being you're not programmed from the parents skin to skin is so important from a newborn and the mother nowadays there's so much debt women have to go out and work two jobs and listen it's unbelievable but having that control when your kid taken away from you, then getting the abandonment issues and then other people raising your kids, you don't know what the fuck other people have got in their mind, especially 100%. teachers, anyone who's raising your children, because everybody's a lot of fucking stinking thinking out there agree. with a lot of fucking crazy people. Imagine having I your agree. kid buying weed because your kid doesn't really look at the what your mum and dad says. They tend to go with what their friends say and what their teachers say. 
So it's, your, your, your kids aren't being raised by you. They've been raised by the system and external force. So the question family. is, can you break that instantly? Of course you can. Instantly. Not instantly. It's difficult. Okay. Can I can I can I give you a mindset data can. set on how potentially you can instantly break yeah, it? Cool. So I've been developing this thesis, right? And and the thesis that I've been developing, I was sharing with some buddies over the last couple of days. It's about the brain and the mind, right? Because we talk about mindset, right? But it's like, what is mindset? Everybody talks about mindset. Like, what is mindset? But we begin to talk about how people operate and everybody talks about vibes and frequencies and you know you have to be in a good vibe or you have to elevate your vibration. People talk about these things. What does it mean? What do all these things mean? How, do, how does it practically become applicable to my life? Nikola Tesla said that the primary function of the brain is to receive information because it operates as a transmitter. The problem with most people is that their mind is full of static. Porn, music, addictions, drugs. Their mind is full of static noise, social media. They have no clarity, number one. Number two, like a radio station. Imagine, I was telling a buddy, you're driving down 1950s, 1960s. You're cruising down the highway, 66 in the Midwest, right? Old school car you're tuning up the radio, the frequency already exists. What you do in order to tap into that frequency and into that state is you need to tune the radio. The frequency state of whatever it is that you want, it already exists in its plane of manifestation. You just have to position yourself there. So what if all your trauma, all your belief systems, you're just operating at a lower vibrational frequency state which is what's causing you to experience that state of reality. And by changing your frequency state, and then we'll talk about what is the highest form of frequency, you elevate your consciousness. And by elevating your consciousness, now you position yourself as a master of your mind because it's, it's all a battle of the mind. That's what they, they're after your mind. But you can instantly break the illusion by changing the frequency that you're in, by that divine inspiration. So what is the highest form of frequency? we see the charts, they talk about enlightenment. What the fuck is enlightenment? <laughs> we have all these ambiguous terms, but nobody asks themselves what they mean. So you begin to look at it. Well, right under enlightenment is the vibrational frequency of love, which most people are like, hey, love is the most powerful thing. Eh, it's not, it's not the most powerful thing. What is enlightenment? There was a test that was conducted that took about 20 years. It was called Spain the scale of positive and negative emotions, where they put individuals into a Faraday cage. And a Faraday cage was basically a place that's covered with like uh, aluminum foil that allows no frequency to come in, no 5G, no Wi-Fi, nothing. So you put subjects inside of this Faraday cage, inside the Spain, the scale of positive and negative motion, this test, and you begin prompting them with different things to trigger what vibrational frequencies within their body. And they realized after different prompts and after 20 years of research that the highest form of vibrational frequency is the vibrational frequency of authenticity to be the truest form of yourself. The problem is most people are not them. They're shells of the ambitions and the desires of other people. So once you live authentically and in truth, right, which is the key, you elevate yourself to that vibrational frequency where you realize who you actually are and you don't condition yourself or limit yourself by all the past. And by breaking that illusion, you instantly enter a new paradigm of reality. And I truly believe that you can break that with full confidence right away because the mind can conquer everything. The beautiful thing about the mind, you can change it. But again, when you're in the system, you've got to look at the schooling system as well. Everybody's wearing the same uniforms. So everything's to be the same instead of the, the school's the left side part of the brain, which is your, your memorization, not the right side, which is your creativity and individuality. Nobody wants to be creative and individual anymore, though, because we're all fucking scared. We look at and the Kim Kardashians and want to be part, all the women want to be part of them, all the fucking lip fillers, the fake hair, the fake tits arse implants, even people in kitchens are cooking dinners, you've got the frying pans are poisoned, the fucking oils, your foods, the waters. What chance have people got? And if you start breaking this down to people, because even these conversations, as much as people can get things off from it, 
It's also scary for people because people are stuck in their own little bubble in their own little world, working nine to five, going home, waking up the next day, doing the exact same shit, listening to the same music in the car, going home, brushing their teeth the same, putting their socks on the same way, their pajamas the same way. If you start saying everything's fucking poisoned, it scares the shit out of people. And it, but yeah, actually, that's why people have got to question it. Google it. Look at your fucking non-stick frying pan. Look at your waters. Look what chemical. Don't look at the calories. Look what chemicals are in it. Look at everything. And it's hard because people are just so caught up. Lunchtime, they'll go to the shop, they'll go to Tesco, buy the sandwiches, buy the water, buy the biscuits, whatever they want but to buy. But what I've come to realize for like some of these basic things is that it's about awareness. And what what we do is like we just tell people like, for example, why would you cook on boiling water with a plastic spoon? It doesn't make sense because you're going to have microplastics infiltrated into the water naturally makes sense. A lot of people are not aware about that. But every person that I've said, hey, use a wooden spoon instead. Nobody's come back to me like, oh, you're a fucking piece of shit. And everybody's like, oh yeah, you know what? That makes sense. Let me buy it on Amazon for $4. And it's just this collective consciousness of just, hey, do better on here, do better on here, do better on here. So once again, it comes from a place of authenticity. So once again, people need to be in a situation whereby they're willing to learn. And it's, and I understand what you mean. I think, I think, I just, I, I just see a lot of uh, potential in humanity. Everybody's I think, got potential. I think, even, I think even with all the poisoning and everything, that's they can't hold this down. You know what I mean? That I think that there's a renaissance of the mind that's taking place. People are waking up. I see it in my community. I see millions yeah. of people, bro. Like the people just waking up to, hey, just the water being poisoned or you know, the, just the music choices. And it doesn't have to be fundamental radical changes all right away. It doesn't have to be. But the journey of a thousand miles always starts with the first step. It's just like, what's the next thing that I should do? The next thing and the next thing and just self-improving. And then the last part, which I think is key, but this is very hard to master, is self-talk. How you talk to yourself about yourself. I think a lot of people talk to themselves the way that they've been trained on how others talk to them when they fail. So when you fail, people shit on you, right? So when you fail internally, you shit on yourself too, because that's how you've been taught to interact with somebody that fails. But what if when you fail, you treat yourself with kindness and grace and respect, knowing that you didn't know any better most of the time, even though you're being blamed exteriorly that you are a culprit, but in fact, maybe you just are figuring it out. And maybe the failure from the outside isn't the way that you should interact with it. So the fear of failure, the fear of trying, the fear of change, comes from how we've interacted with failure. So we need to reprogram how we look at failure. Failure is just trying. If you tried a thousand times and you failed and then you succeeded, everybody would forget about all the failures because that's how it works. You just got to continue batting. You look at, I think it was uh, Federer. He did a, a, a keynote, a speech, and he said, you know, like I missed half of my shots. Like half of my shots are just fails. That's the game. You're going to fail more than you're going to succeed. This mm -hmm. is the name of the game. But words are powerful. You know? I've been saying this man for years. I worked with his interpre interpreter, Dr. Emoto. He used to take photos of the crystals of water. So people who, who are listening or watching, Google that man and you'll see how words are powerful. Yes. Because um, I do affirmations every morning, but I, sometimes you forget as well. And I swear a lot as well. So as much as I know all this shit, I don't fucking actually practice what I preach either. But if you can do affirmations, they say it takes 21 days to break a habit, 21 days to create a new one. Joe Dispenza talks about the neural pathways and how you can change the neurons and um, new neurons which fire together, wired together, we're doing something consistently, then puts that in the subconscious mind. And like, the world can be beautiful. And I'm in Scotland, so I see a lot of beauty. I travel the world and 99.9% .9 of people I meet are amazing as well. Just striking up that conversation. I don't know what they do when they go home. I don't fucking care if I'm honest. But when you actually just break it down, human beings are good. They're mm. fucking good. And if there's catastrophes or there's bad stuff, our main instinct and first instinct is to go and help people. We're genuinely good. It's just everybody's confused. We talk about music. We talk about the CIA that were involved with rap music, 808s, which changes the frequency. Certain music can change the ke chemicals in your body. Like, what's yeah. your fear in all this? It's true, bro. It all comes back down to vibrational frequency. Like that, it's, it's what it comes down to. That's why they're trying to fuck up your frequencies, bro. That's why you have EMF. That's why you have 5G. Like all these things are designed to create what static. So you have no ability to get free thought, no ability to be, have inspiration, no ability to tap into the divine. None of these things happen. What is prayer? 
And people pray, well, just, Father, thou art in heaven. No, that's not prayer. Prayer is connection. It's literally in the word. How do you connect? That's the question. How do you connect if you're full of static? How do you connect when you're literally consuming the poison? What about the clothes? They say there's some stuff on everything. clothes at the end because skin's I mean, the biggest organ. Everything, everything. I mean, your skin is an organ, so everything you interact with, it's getting absorbed. So polyester is basically a synonym for plastic. Most people are just wearing plastic all day. I think fluoride's a big, I think more people have woke up to fluoride than a toothpaste in the 100%, waters now. 100%. I think that's the main one. fluoride is a new thing. It was a, it was a, it's a recent psyop. It hasn't been around for that long. It wasn't maybe a hundred years, maybe 80 years, but fluoride wasn't a thing. This idea of fluoride strengthening your teeth isn't a thing. You can literally pull up carcasses and skeletons and skulls from back in the day, full sets of teeth, never brushed their teeth once, no cavities. So what exactly is causing the deficiencies? Then you go to the food, high fructose corn syrup, seed oils, all these things fucking up your system. Now you look at how the teeth are connected to what? The nerve system and the nerve system connected to your brain. So now you're, the, the health of your mouth and the health of your teeth is directly correlated with what? The health of your brain, which people aren't aware. So everything ties together. Everything works in symbiosis. That's why the mastery is to get to a place in life where you have the ability to work on yourself because we're so fucked up that you need to get to a place of basic freedom where you have the ability to work on yourself and you can do it with a job. It's not about the job. It's about what, what you do with your time. So what you do with your energy and your resources and even people, and I get it, bro, like we come from different backgrounds, but we have to, we have to be positive. We have to, we have to hope for the best. And even if somebody's background is really terrible, they might even consider that their situation isn't that bad, right? So it might be terrible for us, but for them, they may see a way out. So even if you're fucked up, even if you have a bad turnout, there's still, there's still a way around. What do you think of the pineal gland? Don't calcify it. <laughs> Fluoride free. Don't calcify it. I mean, uh, then I, I'll share it with you later. There's a, a special supplement I'll, I'll let you know okay. uh, after that I take to decalcify the pineal gland. And once again, the pineal gland is also known as the third eye. So the third eye is basically your ability to see. But once again, there's different theories as to what it is or what it's not. But throughout history, the little pine cone, pine cone or almond is worshipped. So we can get into those crazy things as well. But do you think we're different? Time. Do you think we are telepathic human beings? Because when 100%. we get the phones, because they say we're telepathic, where we should be able to speak to people in China, Hong Kong, no matter where you are. By again, vibration. When you know someone's going to phone, that your vibration's working to an extent where you're feeling who's going to phone. Um, but again, like I've always said, that everything's energy, everything's vibration. When I was doing bad stuff, the vibration was low. And when the vibration's low, I surround myself with other low vibrational beings. But then my vibration becomes higher. You disconnect. You want to disconnect from porn and alcohol and drugs and bad foods. The only thing I slip with now is sugar. Mm. I seem to eat my emotions. That's the only thing that's got I've that's Still, got. Yes. You know what you should try? Parasite cleansing. I was just about to ask about the parasite. Yeah. I, I, I follow so, Barbara O'Neill. So parasite cleansing a lot. So oh. what happens with parasites is they get access to your nervous system mm -hmm. and they and send they electrical pulses, basically instigating hunger. So they're they're asking, they're craving. So I would do parasite cleanse hundred percent. Yeah, because I follow uh, Dr. Sebi and um, Barbara O'Neill, who's doing amazing work. She was banned from Australia. Everything she does is all organic. Everything's grown from the earth all the cures, all the vitamins, everything that you need to grow your hair back, your nails, your teeth. It's fucking mad that people are so uneducated. It's not even people are uneducated. They've just never had the knowledge put in front of them. Yeah. You're only being educated from the schooling system and then find a job and work nine to five. They're not really, you don't question the schooling system. You know what happened to me with food? So believe it or not, I was almost 200 pounds. Uh, I had a, I had a psychedelic experience a couple of years ago. Ayahuasca? I was, uh, no, it wasn't ayahuasca, just mushrooms. <laughs> And the first thing that I realized, I was like, what the fuck? Like, I was like, what am, why am I eating all this junk food? That was my first epiphany. It's like, what the fuck am I doing? Almost 200 pounds, might be hard to believe now. I don't know what that translates into kilos, but 200 pounds, I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, let me evaluate my relationship with food. And 
I would begin to, when I got these cravings, to think like, okay, why is this happening? Like, why am I feeling? What is it that I'm feeling? Is it a craving? Is it, oh, just uh, I'm caving into my emotions or are these just still alibis that I'm giving myself? And as I began to be honest with myself, I realized that food was an addiction and that I didn't treat it with the same respect that I treated other addictions that society considers worse. But one of the leading issues for death in the United States, cardiac arrest, heart arrest, it all comes from what people eat, people's food, arteries blocked, but we don't give it the same. People walk into church talking about, you know, the temple of God, eating their donut, drinking their fluoridated water, no consciousness, no awareness, because they don't put it on the same level of addiction, right? They're, it's just, oh no, it's okay. But then you're like, oh, whoa, 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 I'm addicted to food. Well, I'm an, I'm an addict to nothing, right? That's why gluttony is one of the seven deadly sins, <laughs> right? It's crazy, but it, and it's there, it's deadly. It'll kill you, right? So once you evaluate these things, you're like, hmm, they've told me it's not as bad, but what if they're fucking with me? Like, what if it is? And once I realized that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna treat myself with respect. Just like I wouldn't go do cocaine or do X, Y, and Z because I treat myself with respect. I don't want that addiction. Same thing with food. And once you master that, that once again, the mindset of it, mm -hmm. then it changes. That's the first part. The second part is you never want temptation or addiction to be close to you. So what does your pantry look like? Do you set yourself up for success? What I've told people is, make it so hard to lose that it becomes easy to win. So what does your pantry look like? What does your kitchen look like, right? If it's designed to make you stumble and fall, then you're gonna stumble and fall. But if you set yourself up before for success, then you're going to win. If you open up the fridge, all you have is ribeye, grass fed, right? All you have is your chicken, all you have is your rice, all you have is your broccoli. You don't have your processed garbage. You don't have your sweets. You don't have the candy. You have the food that you know is good for you. You have no choice. You don't think about it, it's just there. And once you begin to make it so hard to lose that it becomes easy to win, then you set yourself up for success. What do you think about sexual energy exchange, soul ties? And people who kind of, they say when you sleep with a girl, you kind of, take their data, their energy, whether it's a negative or whatever, and the energy of the people they've been with. It's true. It's true. Absolutely. I mean, in every sense of the word, I mean, you take it and at a memory level, at a cellular level, your cells remember, your energy remembers, you remember. And uh, yeah, you just share yourself with another person. So people need to be careful about that. One, two, careful with vaccinated women, bro. If you're not vaccinated, just know and study how the vaccine transmits as well, sexual contact. So if you're out here sleeping with vaccinated women, you're in trouble, bro. <laughs> Better off getting a job. <laughs> what do you think of porn? Stay away. Uh, I mean, just look at who owns the porn industry and then just realize that it's a psyop or it's art, everything artificial, right? Everything that God's made naturally, man's tried to engineer, everything. So once again, what is it doing for you? Beneficial or negative? Is it an addiction? Are you treating it as a poison? Are you treating it as something that is, what is the intention of the person that is making this? Are they trying, are they, is it for my best interest? The person hosting this website, do they care about me? If the answer is no, then why the, f if I offered you a sandwich right now and I'm like, hey, I didn't make this with kindness. I smeared it all over the floor right? But I'm gonna package it nicely, here you go. Would you eat it? No, because it's not made with the best intent in mind. Same thing with everything. So what's the intention behind these websites? What's the intention behind this video? What's the intent? Is it to take from me or is it to give? If it's to take my energy, I don't want it. It's not even whether it's good or bad, it's being fucking intelligent. You have to go beyond more, like, like morals are one thing, but why do you have these morals? Why is this the better way of life? When you can justify your morals with logic, you become unstoppable. There's logic to morality. 
you just have to be able to identify it. You can't just say, oh, this is what I believe, because if that's what you just believe and that's your conviction without any sort of mental logic behind it, then there's a propensity to cave because it only makes sense to live the best life possible. So why would you do things that cripple you from that? Do you think it comes down to self-control as well? Having a bit of self-control to say no and then realizing, because like you say, everybody's got true potential, everybody's got greatness in them. And if you can tap into it just a little bit and you start seeing the results, it makes you want more. When I started the podcast as well, when you start getting views, I remember getting a thousand views and I was, it's probably the happiest I've been mm. since I started this journey because it was a goal and then you get 10,000 and you get a million. Now we're hitting a billion downloads and views and it just doesn't feel the same. But I remember at the start of the journey, now it becomes a business. It's more a business module now. I know how it understands, I know how it operates, I know how it function. I know how to provide for the people around me by things that I do now. Mm. I've mastered that, but it's just mad the potential that so many human beings have got in them to then create change, to then better their life. And but by better their life can be just the smallest of thing. And it's um, if the people could tap into it and, and see what they've got, man, wow, how fucking amazing the world would be. But it's just, I think, I think the world is controlled by a bit of greed, a bit of power. And I think we've all got that. I think that's just human instincts. But we've all got animal natures in us to then want to be the best, work hard. That's just the fucking way as well. Will it ever change? I don't know. Do you think there's a universe? Do you think there's more out there? Because I know people believe we're in a dome. People say the Bro, world's round, it's flat. We could live on a fucking Dorito shaped planet. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I got, after this pod, bro, I got to go back to the trenches. I got to go to the gym. <laughs> like, I got shit to do, bro. Yeah. Like, I ain't going to space. And I don't know what's out there. I got problems. I got things that I got to work on. I got, I got mindset that I got to fix. You know, I got business that I got to take care of. Like, who knows? You know, you, you, life is about goals. You're never going to become everything. You have to pick what you want to be. You have to pick your destination, what you want. Bro, if I wanted to focus on whether the earth is flat or round, I would focus, I'd dedicate my life to it. I'm, de I'm not dedicating my life to it. So I, why would I dedicate 0.8% of my time to it? I'm not fully focused, right? So what are the goals? All these conspiracies, all these things taking place, bro. Like they're all like noise to me. Yeah, of course that's happening. Of course. Oh, oh, you don't think they fucking sacrifice kids? Oh, okay. Well, you're an idiot. Duh, that's happening. Oh, you don't think they're committing genocide and bombing people and cleansing people? Oh, well, you're an idiot. Like, what am I going to do? Sit down and oh, you think they're jabbing, po poisoning you? Oh no, you don't think that? Okay, sounds good. Go get jabbed. <laughs> what am I going to do? Fight people? No, bro. I got shit to do. I'm not here trying to fit. Like, if you don't see it, you don't see it. And if you see it, welcome to the journey, fellow glitch. What do you think of the matrix? It's real, bro. Matrix comes from the word matriz, uh, which means womb, which means to be birthed. So the entire, the concept of matrix is the constructed system. So the question is what levels of the matrix exist? There's multiple levels, you know, you have the financial system, you have the governmental system, you have the natural system, you have the universal system. There's many levels to the game. What I would say is you're bound to it. You have to play it. You have to play the game. The question is, if you understand that it's a game, do you have better odds to play it? Yes, most people take life seriously. If it's just a video game, you know, it's just passing by, you know, it's just a journey. Then you might get viewed differently and the perspective might shift. What do you think makes you happy when are you at your happiest? Hmm. I'm pretty content all the time. Where does that come from? Choice. <laughs> Where are you beforehand? Do you think money helps? Absolutely, money helps. <laughs> because money gives me the ability to to have freedom. Absolutely. But how much money? You don't need millions of dollars. You just have to have the ability to do what you want, whenever you want, however you want, and say what you want. Uh, but happiness isn't even something I focus on. It's not a factor for me. I don't, I don't chase happiness. I don't look for happiness. I don't pursue happiness. I am after experiencing life, the fullness, the range of it. You know, I was telling somebody before, you know, people pray and ask God for patience. But then when God sends them a situation that tests their patience and is very difficult, they don't realize that that's what God sent them in order for that patience to be developed. You want the patience, but you don't want the process in order to achieve the patience. So if you're asking God for self-development, you want to become better, you're going to have to go through some shit. Life's not going to be easy. Welcome to the game. This is what you signed up for pain, suffering. <laughs> oh no, I didn't sign up for it. Well, you signed up for it just by being human. 
So welcome to the game. We're all playing it. Some people have different levels of uh, suffering. Some people have more privilege. Some people have less privilege. It is what it is. What are you gonna fucking do about it? Cut the pie in half, not gonna happen. So take the cards that you're dealt with, elevate your consciousness, be grateful that you have the opportunity to change your life. And if you don't think you have the opportunity, you won't have the opportunity. Your life won't be my life, right? Your outcomes aren't supposed to be my outcomes. What you drive isn't supposed to be what I drive. Where I live isn't supposed to be what you live. You don't fucking know anything about me, motherfucker, watching this podcast. You don't know if I'm happy or not happy. All you can do is your best. What do you think of social media? <laughs> I think social media is great. I think people talk shit about it, but at the end of the day, it's, it's what you use it for. It's a tool. Intention. It's all about intention. What about religion? I think every religion is man-made construct trying to define and understand God. And if you limit yourself to another person's perspective as to who God is or what God is, then you may limit yourself to the experiences that he has or that God has for you. So I read a lot of texts. I gain a lot of wisdom through them, but yeah, you know, whether you look at the Catholic church and the history of it and indulgences and uh, how they were charging people entry fees to go to heaven, which is absolutely fucked. You begin to question the, the entire system and you just have to, once again, look at intention. And then secondly, ask yourself, do I need a middleman? Do I need another person in order to have a relationship with God? The answer is, in my opinion, no, but you have to develop it. So if another person was able to receive divine inspiration, right? Or divine guidance or enlightenment, are they any special? If you think they're more special than you, then there you go, that's your answer. But if you think that you have the ability to have that same inspiration or that same divine intervention, then you can have it. Life is a mad journey. I always say it's a beautiful mess. <laughs> it's just trying to find the balance of trying to find your true, true purpose and being at your true source because it just, you can, do you feel as if we can question it too much though and look into it too much without just enjoying the beauty of it? I think it's, I think is, you know, Seneca famously said, we often, you know, suffer more in imagination than we do in reality. <laughs> yeah, the brain's a so, too. So the brain is there to keep you alive, you know? And once once you're alive and thriving, it wants to create more problems. What's your daily routine like? Dude, I've been traveling, dude. I've been traveling every single day. My routine is very simple. I wake up, I do my stretching, non-negotiable. 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes of uh, sunlight and then straight to work. What do you think of the sun? The sun? Mm. Thank God for the sun, bro. I look pretty good tan, huh? Yeah. That's the main energy that's source. The, that's the Italian sun, bro. I'm, I, I, think I, I think I'm gonna get a place in Europe. I, was in, I just got back from, from, from Italy and mm. I was in the US and bro, everything's just so dead. Everything is, everything is created for profit. Like everything is designed for profit, like everything. Even how things are built to be cheaper at cost and every interaction is a transactional interaction. That's the system. You go to Italy, people don't give a fuck. You know, everything's chill. People make things that are inconvenient. They'll carve fucking random ass staircases on the side of the mountain for no fucking reason, just to have a little church on the hill. Like, you know, it's not convenient, but that's dope, human potential, creativity. So these are the things I go there, I'm, I'm inspired. I'm like, there's a reason why the kings of old lived in Greece and in Italy and in Rome. Why were they there? I'm gonna go there, I'm a king, why not? People want me back in the comments, fuck this motherfucker, he thinks he's a king. I'm gonna see you in Italy. Everybody's <laughs> a fucking king. Have you ever, look, have you ever looked into sun gazing? Uh, yeah, I've looked into it. It helps with uh, melatonin production, helps with, uh, is it melatonin production? I think it helps with melatonin production, helps you set your circadian rhythms for the next day. What about fasting? Fasting, pretty much run intermittent fast every single day probably a full 24 hour fast once a month. Just to cleanse? Just to cleanse, yeah, 100%. Intermittent fasting is incredible. For people watching, what should they do for a parasite cleanse? I'm not a professional in parasite cleanse, but there's definitely a lot of people that uh, you should not be listening to. You need to go to somebody who's an ultra specialist, why? Because if you don't kill all the parasites, they begin to breed. So they begin to lay eggs inside of you because it's their survival mechanism. So if you don't cleanse it properly, you're gonna have more parasites afterwards. So it's like you either do it right or you don't do it at all. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the crypto stuff for people who's maybe interested in it. 
yeah. because you've obviously got a bit of knowledge with it. You've made a good bit of money from it. What can people do to then try and educate themselves a bit more before they take a risk? First, it's not a risk. It's understanding that it's an alternative money system. So what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a decentralized ledger with X amount of individual units. These units hold a market value. You buy them if you want it to assume that it's gonna go up and you sell it if you think it's gonna go down. The question is, why is it valuable? Why do people value it? Scarcity, transparency, sovereignty. You know what, how much supply exists, you know who holds it, and you know how the system works. There's no shadiness. So if for somebody at once, transparency and clarity, it exists there. It's also understanding that when you put money into the bank, you're not saving money. The idea of a deposit is not a deposit. Why is it that the bank gives you an interest on the money that you deposit? Because you're not inserting a deposit, they're giving you a loan. Once they give you a that return, I don't know what return they have here in the UK, maybe 0.1%, maybe 0.2%, yeah. some garbage like that. Now your balance becomes what? A liability. It's not an asset, it's a liability. They take your money and they invest it. That's how the system works. So what you've done is you've fallen for that system of assuming that somebody else has your best interest in mind. They've produced a service, which is the ability to remit payments. But up until now, there was no competitor to it. We have an entire competing ecosystem known as DeFi, decentralized finance, where people from all over the world can transact very effectively and very easily. One example is Telegram. Are you familiar with the Telegram yeah. application? So on top of Telegram, an entire blockchain was built known as the open network. So for example, if I have your Telegram username right now, you set up a wallet on Telegram through Ton and I can send you USDT to your Telegram username. I could send you a million dollars to your Telegram username. Right now, I don't have to ask anybody. I just, no permission, no signature, nothing. Is that better than the bank? Of course. So it's alternative systems. That is crypto. Don't look at the asset class. Look at the technology. Look at the ecosystem. Look at the infrastructure. Pay attention to the developing environment. It's like knowing that cars were about to be a thing and being like, hmm, okay, maybe I'm not gonna invest in Ford or maybe I'm not gonna buy a car year one, but let me pay attention to it because maybe the, the industry of horses is about to fucking get shit on. So if you have a competing ecosystem that is better that's taking over, if you have a competing ecosystem that's taking over like crypto, you have to look at why is it taking over? And it's taking over because it's a better alternative. Now you just have the old powers being like, it's shit, fuck crypto, fuck Bitcoin, because their jobs are at risk. It's not because they want to protect you. So if their jobs are at risk, they're going to fight for what? Their jobs. I get it. It's a competing system. So don't look at the asset class. Don't worry about the individual units, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ton. Don't worry about these things. Look at the technology. Look at the ecosystem and ask yourself, which one do you think is going to win? Which one, do you, which one would you use as an individual? Would you want me to go to the bank and sign and then have to do a phone call verification? No, I wanna interact with you quickly, transparently, securely. Crypto offers that. So it's an alternative payment system. It's an alternative ecosystem to the traditional one and it's increasingly becoming more popular. It goes back to what I mentioned about coinage when we started. It's the evolution of coinage. It's the evolution of money. So the question is, why is it that the US dollar became the most valuable paper? There's an entire history behind that. That, do you think it was competing against nobody? It was competing against the British pound. It was competing against multiple currencies at its time. Absolutely, but it reigned supreme. Why? Because it was the better system or at least a system that everybody agreed to or were forced to adopt because of the petrodollar. So now we have an alternative system that's emerging. And I think the alternative system has a real chance at winning because it's pure, it's authentic. We're talking about authentic. authenticity wins. It's not the system of lies because people are waking up. Do you think it'll be a cashless society within the next few years? We're already cashless. I don't even carry cash anymore. We're cashless already. This idea of central bank digital currencies are a fucking hoax. 
we already are in central bank digital currency. They can shut down your application at any moment. That- Go fucking try and pull twenty thousand dollars cash, dude. So it's like it's like you're stealing. Yeah, I can't lift more than insane, five thousand out the bank without the questions and four. It's like phone they think calls. you're stealing. They mm. think they think you're about to do something crazy. What do you think of the city of London? The city of London is very interesting. When you begin to look at the, the history of the city of London, there's three major cities. I won't go into details for, but I'll say this for the clip. There's three cities that you need to study how they operate and how they transact with each other and with the world. There's three independent nation states, Washington DC, the city of London, and the Vatican. The political arm, the financial arm, and the religious arm of the world. That's all I'm going to say. Look into those three things, do some rabbit trailing, and uh, I'll stop there. For anybody watching, what sort of books would you recommend for them to try and give them a better understanding of life, knowledge, and hopefully give them a, a kick to give them a, a kind of kickstart to then see the world a bit differently to make better changes? Yeah, let's talk about three books. The first one, and I'll mention different books in different podcasts. The first one is The Lords of Easy Money, Understanding How the Money Supply Works. It's a little bit of a comprehensive read, but by the end of it, you're gonna be so pissed. You're gonna start making money because you're gonna understand how it works. The second one is the millionaire mastermind. Excuse me, the millionaire master plan. It's understanding what is your wealth profile? What is a wealth profile? Different people make money in different ways. Cristiano Ronaldo made his money completely differently than Madonna, right? Or completely differently than Elon Musk. Each of them, have a wealth profile. They've attributed and been able to build wealth in their own avenue. So what you need to do is identify what is your wealth profile. People are looking at stock traders or at investors. Like, oh, I wish I could do that, but it's complicated. Well, maybe it's not your wealth profile. Maybe you're trying to get rich at the wrong thing. Maybe you're trying to build wealth in the wrong area because it's not your expertise. So the millionaire master plan, great book to kind of understand your wealth profile. And finally, the one I always recommend to people Inside of the Bible, there's a book known as Proverbs. It's 31 chapters. You can read one chapter every single day. It takes you about five minutes. Transcendental, unchanging, forever wisdom that can be applied to anybody, regardless of religion, race, age, or gender. The best book in the world. What about for anybody that's struggling with depression? What advice would you have for them? Go to the gym. Go to the gym begin stimulating your body. Vibrational frequencies are real. The music that you listen to will impact your mindset. The people you hang out with will impact your mindset. Whether you exercise or not will impact your mindset. Focus on the things you can control. And if there's variables outside of your control, a lot of things resort to whether you commit self-sabotage or not. And a lot of people that happen to be in a low state, right? We call it a downward spiral because people continue going down and down and down. With the downward spiral, what you need to identify is what's causing it. And a lot of it, you come to realize it's within your control. The food that you eat, the music you listen to, and the things that you can change will instigate what? A reversal to what? An upward cycle, a positive momentum. So what your goal to do is to shift from negative emotion to positive emotion. If you need a professional for it, I completely understand, but there's definitely things that one can work on on a regular basis. Why do you think that is for human beings that they go down a spiral and they don't really get out, they just keep going worse and worse and worse? Once again, you know, knowledge, they just don't know. If you don't, it, it, you can't solve the problems in your life with the same information that gave you the problems in the first place. <laughs> you need new information. That's why the Bible says, you know, When I became a man, I put away childish things. So if you wanna become a man, if you wanna evolve, you can't do the same things that you used to do. If you wanna change your life, you can't think the same things that put you in that shitty situation in the first place. You need a renewed mind. That's why the Bible also says be transformed, right? Change yourself, not through action. It says be transformed by what? The renewal of your mind. So through the renewal of your mind, you achieve transformation. Where do you go forward for the future? What's your plans? What are my plans? Lunch? <laughs> do you think that far <laughs> is uh, Because I know you were at the Argentina game. Yeah, it was last minute. Uh, we, I, I gambled on it before Argentina made it to the fan. 
four tickets, ten grand. Worth the experience. Yeah. So you bought tickets for the final before they got before to the, the yeah, final? Yeah, absolutely. I had to test my luck. Maybe you are in tune with your frequency, brother. Yeah. Maybe you can see the future. Yeah, it's a shame Messi got off injured, but um, unbelievable career, under, unbelievable player. How does men like that stay at the top of their game for so long? Mm. And, you know, at that age and still competing at that level, where the like, same as Ronaldo and stuff like that, it's just, people say it's a freak of nature, but it's not. The, what do you think that main ingredient is for them to be there? Uh, even though you look at guys like Tom Cruise, a totally different trade, but he's at the top of his game. He's still having blockbuster films. He still looks as if he's having fun. How do? What do you think that is for these men? Consistency. Do you think that's what it is? Just straightforward is that? Consistency, bro. Mm -hmm. They're the best at always showing up. So you can fucking can do that. How are you feeling today, bro? I'm I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, listen, listen. It was great to have you on. Would you like to finish up on anything else, brother? What's your your social links and stuff for people to get involved? Ask Luke questions. Belmar. Yeah, Luke Belmar across all socials. What's just, your website? Uh, uh, LukeBelmar.com. We still got to work on it. Let's get that get done. Get it sorted, lads. <laughs> like I say, brother, I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you, I'll get you on for a part two. Take on another journey. But like I say, keep smashing it. Keep doing what you're doing, man. You're doing hashtag, great work. Hashtag undeniable in the comment section if you want to become an undeniable individual that when somebody sees you, they say, this person's the real deal. God bless you, brother. Thanks, G.